In today's mini tutorial, we're going to cover a technique for animating alternating steps, like turning a box on one axis and then on another and so on. This came up in a recent discussion on Instagram about ways to move a grid on two axes in sequence. The techniques that we're going to cover here are applicable to really anything in Touch Designer, although I'm going to be using RayTK as a way to demonstrate them. Start by downloading the RayTK Talks from the GitHub releases page. There is a download link in the video description. Drop that into your project, and I like to do that at the root outside of the main project comp, but you can put it wherever you want. Once that's in place, we can start building our scene. We're going to run through this part quickly since this isn't really the main focus of the video. Open the RayTK palette using the Alt-R shortcut and create a box frame SDF. And then on the box frame for the scale for all three parts, we're going to drop that down to around 0.7 just so it fits better in the view. And then we're going to open the palette again and create a rotate operator and connect the box frame to that. Then with the rotate operator selected, Open the RayTK's Editor Tools menu with Alt-Shift-R and choose Add Raymarch Render 3D. Then create a null top and connect it to the first output of the render so you can see the rendered image. So we now have a basic scene with a box shape that we can rotate rendered with ray marching. And that's it for the RayTK specific parts of this. The next step is to animate the rotation so that it first rotates by 90 degrees on the x-axis, and then on y, and then on z. So the first thing that we need to do is create a chop that generates pulses. Let's create an LFO chop. Type, we're going to change that to pulse. This produces periodic pulses that are going to trigger each step of the animation. You could also use something like beat detection from audio or a MIDI control or something else that produces a channel that pulses periodically. So next, we need to take this one channel and turn it into three channels that pulse one after another. So let's create a count chop and connect it to the LFO. This gives us a channel that counts up by one every time a pulse comes in. So next, we need to split it out into the three channels. And to do that, we can create a fan chop and connect the count to that. And then for the channel names, we're going to change that to R, open square bracket, X, Y, Z, close square bracket. That gives us three channels, an Rx, an Ry, and an Rz. But with things set the way they currently are, since our count is now well above two, then it's kind of just stuck on the last one here. So what we need to do to change that is go over to the outside range parameter and change that to loop index. So now it's going to step through first one, second one, so on, and then go back to the first. Next, we want to take these pulsing channels and use it to drive rotation in 90 degree increments. So let's create another count chop. Connect that up to the fan. So now we have three different channels that count up one after another. Next, we need to scale this to the right range for angles for rotation. So let's add a math chop. And then on the multiply page, we're just going to set the multiply to 90. So now it's jumping in 90 degree increments. In order to smooth it out, let's add a lag chop. You could also use a filter chop if you want. And those provide slightly different types of smoothing. So now that we have our channels doing the right thing, let's add a null chop on the end. And let's name that rotation. 
Then let's open the viewer on that operator and go over to our rotate. And we're going to take that Rx channel, drag it onto the Rx parameter, and choose either chop reference or export chop. You can do either one. It's kind of up to a personal preference. And then we're going to do the same thing for Ry and for Rz. Now you can adjust the lag settings here to control how gradually it smooths out those transitions. And you can even increase that to longer than the interval of the pulses, and it will kind of always continually move to some extent. All right, just going to go back to the defaults there. We'll add another step to this sequence that's going to make the thickness of the box kind of pulse in briefly. Now we could set up another chain kind of like what we have here for the rotation with this whole thing, but then that wouldn't have any connection to what we're doing for the rotation. So we want to make sure it's part of that sequence and not just another sequence happening in parallel. So to do that, let's go over to our fan. And for the channel names, we're going to add thickness to the end. Now we get four channels, but only three of those are needed for the rotation. So let's add a select chop to isolate just those channels for that first branch of that chain. And then for the channel names, you can just do the same thing, R bracket, X, Y, Z bracket. Then let's create another select chop and connect it up to the fan. And for this one, we're just going to change the channel names to thickness. So now we have just that one channel. Next, we want to take this channel that toggles on every so often and change that into a pulse that kind of ramps up pretty quickly and then ramps back down immediately, but smoothly. So let's start by creating a trigger chop. And we're going to connect that up to the select. Then on the attack length, we can drop it down a little bit to maybe 0 0.1. And for the peak length, we drop that down to 0. Then on the sustain page, drop the decay down to 0 increase the sustain level to 1, and then for the release length, let's drop it down to maybe 0 0.1. This doesn't necessarily have to be the same as the attack, but it works out OK to have it that way. So this is doing kind of what we want, where it's ramping up, and then when it's done, it ramps down. But it's staying on for the duration of that step in the sequence. So what we want instead is just a brief blip. So let's create a logic chop and insert that before the trigger. And then for that, let's change the channel pre-op to rising edge. So that'll just give us a brief pulse anytime that that value goes up. And then it goes immediately back down. So now we want to scale this to whatever range we want for the box frame's thickness. Let's drop down a math and connect that up. And on the range page, change the two range to maybe 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. Then let's add a mill chop on the end. And we can call that thickness. Then we're going to do something similar to what we did before. So open the viewer on that chop, go over to our box frame, and then drag that channel onto thickness and choose either export or chop reference. And that's it. What we have now is that sequence of rotation along one axis and another and another, and then this kind of pulse inwards. So to recap, we're driving the whole thing with an LFO that produces periodic pulses. And that could also be substituted with like a audio reactivity beat detection or a button or something like that. We're then counting those pulses 
and using a fan to split that out into four different channels that pop on and off one after another. For the rotation channels, we're isolating those, then counting the number of pulses on each one of those, multiplying it by 90 so we get a good range for angles, using a lag to smooth it out, and then using those channels to drive the properties of the rotate operator. Then for the thickness, we isolate just that one channel. We're using a logic chop to change it from a kind of turn on and stay that way to just a really brief, to a really brief blip. And then we're using a trigger to add some smoothing to kind of ramp up and then ramp down, but still pretty quickly. Then we're using a math chop to scale that to the range that we want for our box frame thickness and using that channel to drive that parameter. This technique is useful for all different types of animations where you want things to happen in a repeating sequence. So I look forward to seeing what you all do with this and let me know in the comments if there are any other techniques that you wanna to add to the next tutorial. So if you wanna support RayTK development, check out my Patreon. You'll get early access to tutorials, exclusive scene downloads, and more. Thanks for watching, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe.